Hello, I'm Phil Svitek, 360 Creative Coach. And in this episode, I wanna talk about the idea of having to work twice as hard. And this can apply to activism, but it can also apply to creativity. And before I fully get into it though, I would like to take the opportunity to invite you to subscribe if you haven't already. That way you get all the various lessons I put out right when I put them out. Thank you if you just did, and thank you if you already were. It truly does mean a lot to me, as I hope it does to you. So let's get into this. The jumping off point for me has always been this idea when people, whenever they talk about how you can be successful, they make the statement of, you know, Beyonce has 24 hours in the day just like you. And the reason I find that problematic is because it negates the fact that, you know, at this current stage in her life, Beyonce would never have to do laundry, cook for herself, or do what we call maintenance tasks, okay? You know, uh, cleaning the house, uh, do the dishes, all that stuff, right? You know, make her bed, whatever the hell it may be. But stuff that we routinely have to do that don't grow our careers, but we have to do. And in many ways, you can consider your career a maintenance task. Right. It, and, and, I, and I say that for the simple fact of, you know, like whatever is paying your bills, right? You're nine to five and you're an artist out there. Um, you got to get your ba- bills paid. So you're nine to five. Um, and for some of us, it might be, you know, two jobs. But let's just I'll just keep using the term nine to five. That job isn't necessarily advancing your career. Sometimes it is not all the time, you know. A luck, people have been lucky if it can, but uh, the idea still is that, okay, that's already eight hours of your day spoken for, more if you're having to drive to and from, right? So no, you don't have 24 hours in the day like Beyonce does to just do whatever, what we call growth tasks, okay? Tasks that create new opportunities in your life. You know, writing a book, making a movie, uh, writing songs, whatever it may be. And so in that sense, yes, it feels like, and oftentimes it is the case if you actually want to get it, you have to work twice as hard as most people. So, you know, you've just gone through a grueling day, you know, You had your nine to five, you had to get up, you know, you had to drive at seven, get home at seven. So, you know, that's a 12 hour day right there. Boom, you still got to take care of all the other shit that we talked about, right? You know, cook food, (laughs) you know, shower, um, clean up, whatever the case may be. And then you finally get a few precious hours to like, just do what you're supposed to do. And you're fucking exhausted. It sucks. And I get it. But unfortunately, that is the way, right? Um, you know, if you're going to do that, if, if, if you have these high aspirations, that's what it's going to take. And part of it is you just have to kind of understand that, you know, people, people ask me, do I get upset over the fact that like, it just in terms of what I do, um, you know, wouldn't it be nice if X, Y, and Z? And I'm like, yeah, of course it would be nice if for my movie, um, you know, someone was funding my movie and I didn't have to like self-fund it and whatever else, or if I had like a team of, you know, X, Y, and Z, but I don't. And I accept it as that. And so, you know, in spite of that, like, okay, you know, I'm not someone who, who, who likes to be deterred by gatekeepers. So, you know, in this case, you know, if there's not financial people or a studio, whatever the case may be, giving money to make my movie. Okay. Well, how do I make the movie that I want to make on this, you know, with the scale that I want. Okay, I'm gonna apply my creativity to it. Um, obviously, that means, um, you know, resources are gonna be lacking, so how do I make up for that um, in the w- various ways that I do? Well, I can, you know, in my case, I wear a crap ton of hats. I am the producer, I am the writer, I, you know, I'm my own editor. Um, and it's not to say I'm not collaborative and that people aren't helping, but I try to shoulder a lot of the burden and utilize the people for uh, what their specialty is. You know, only ask them, uh, you know, the, the stuff that I truly can't do myself. Uh, for example, you know, one of the people uh, working on my film is Jonathan Moulton. And, you know, he's he's a VFX guy. I can't do VFX. I know I, I can, 
get things prepped as much as I can and make it as simple for him as possible, but, but I can't do the VFX myself, right? So that's an example. The other thing, you know, just as a side tangent, I, I uh, make it so everyone's a collaborator within the project so that way everyone uh, essentially stands to benefit equal amount, including myself. So you know, the, the, the risk essentially for them is low um, and, the, and the benefit is high, you know, um, in that way. That's, that's the idea. But anyway, um, yeah, it, 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 I, part of it, is, it, it's just accepting that aspect that, yes, it's, it's a grind. And I was having a conversation with one of my friends who's unhappy in his position. I said, okay, you have, you have one of two choices. You can keep the job that you have and not worry about your bills and know that like you, you absolutely hate it. Um, and then have to like really dig your heels in for like a couple, couple weeks, maybe a month, maybe two months, who knows until you find the next job. And part of finding that next job is to, you know, update your resume, update, you, you know, your website, various stuff around it. And that'll take work and it's going to sacrifice, you're going to have to sacrifice your social life for a little bit and X, Y, and Z. Or in theory, you know, if, if it's doable for you, you could quit your job and, and your job, your day job, instead of, you know, the time that that was filling, now your job becomes finding a job. He's like, no, I don't want to do that. I said, okay, that's fine. I, I understand that. I'm just laying out the various options here. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, it kind of, I don't know, one of the reasons I'm talking about it, because it does sadden me because, you know, um, it's one of those things we know we should do something, right? Or we want to, because oftentimes, like when, when we talk about, you know, getting out of a situation, you know, wanting more creatively and things like that, um, we know we want it and we desire it. And yet it's still not a must in us. We, we know we should do X, Y, and Z, but we don't because it's not a must. And so the friend that I'm talking about, it's just, you know, as painful as the experience of you know, his current situation is, it's still not a must where, you know, he's willing to put, you know, basically double the work to get out of that situation. And, you know, that applies to creativity, but it also applies to activism. I think, you know, um, and I'm not saying activism and creativity are one and the same, but in this sense, there, there are similarities because, you know, people will often talk about, um, and forgive me, but on Simon Sinek's uh, A Bit of Optimism, one of the guests, um, Chloe um, uh, Valderi, she talked about this idea that when, when people, uh, you know, when, when, when people went to protest with Martin Luther King, he asked them not to have hate in their heart because if they had hate in their heart, it wasn't a worthwhile protest. And, you know, Simon kind of, he, he wanted her to expand upon that because it's like, it's, it's asking essentially victims to do, to do twice as much work instead of, you know, um, uh, instigators isn't the right word, but um, I, I'm blanking on it for some reason. Anyway, the point being that, yes, it's acting, asking a lot to do, uh, to do twice as much work for people who are marginalized, victimized, and so forth. And yet, you know, she argues without that, because, you know, if, if, if it's just a reaction and instead of like a calculated response that's cool and calm, in that instance, you know, the protest, it wasn't going to work. It wasn't going to be effective. And that was the belief of Martin Luther King. And that's just one sort of example of this. Um, but I think it is important to understand, you know, um, because... We have higher, you know, those of us who aspire to have the world that we want, whether it be universal health care, whether, you know, something that is at peace on earth, right? And all this different stuff, you know, whatever the lofty ambition is, uh, you know, climate change, all that stuff, right? Whatever it is, doing the work is going to be unglamorous, unsexy, hard, and you're going to you're going to have to work twice as hard to achieve the result unfortunately because 
you're changing the status quo. When I say you, um, you know, the, the things that I mentioned are things that I believe in. And so, you know, I should really be using the word we, but, um, still that, that is the point that is, that is just a fact we have to accept. And so we have to really ask ourselves, you know, is this something that I want and am I willing to dig in to get it? And for me, whether it's putting out content, um, in this way, whether it's writing my books, whether it's, you know, making my movies and things like that, for me, it is a must. It is worth it. And, you know, it's come with a lot of sacrifice in many ways, but, um, you know, I, I, but it's not a sacrifice in the sense that it is what I want, you know, and it is worthwhile to me and it brings me joy. So that's how I approach life. You know, and yeah, it, I, I, I just don't know in certain ways another way around it um, in many ways. But, but I think you have to know that fact and accept that fact and also not be perturbed by the people that say, innocently enough, though it may be, statements like, oh, you and Beyonce both have 24 hours in the day because it's not, a, it's, it's not true. You know, if anything, what you would want to do is take whoever you aspire to be and look at where, look at the steps that they took at the beginning of their career, because that's, that's more akin to, you know, what you should be doing. Right. So for me, a big inspiration is always Robert Rodriguez. And he made his first feature film on $7,000. I made mine on five. But that's also because I wasn't shooting on film and we had modern day and stuff like that. Anyway, right? So you, you, want, to, you want to study um, the phases of people's careers where you're at, you know, so you know their trajectory and can, can essentially mimic it to the best that you can. Obviously, you know, there might be uh, with, with time gone by, you know, the things that they did might not be 100% applicable, but the spirit ultimately can be right? And that's the point. So it starts with asking yourself, you know, do I want to work essentially twice as hard to achieve whatever goal I have, whether it's creativity, activism, or anything else in life, you know, even, even the idea of like dating, right? Like finding that perfect person, it's going to take work. You know, are you willing to put that in anything worth in life that you want? You got to ask yourself that. I believe that. So that's what I pose to you today. As always, if you have any questions or thoughts of your own, please comment down below or hit me up on social media at Phil Svitek. Likewise, if you would like to discuss anything further, um, that's what my Patreon page is for. It allows for more direct interactions, patreon.com slash Phil Also, I've made mention of the various creative projects that I put out into the world. The links are in the description. If you would like to check those out and support me that way, supporting that stuff, helps inform this and I can deliver more value. You know, it's all very cyclical. But anyway, thank you so much. I appreciate you and hope to see you next time.